born in Toronto. I am. Former figure skater. Yeah. I competed internationally for 10 years, which was cool. Tell me about that. Well, when I was six, I went to go see Kurt Browning, who's like a very famous figure skater in Canada. And um, he did this number where he has a red nose on. He's like a clown. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. And it's called Ragatone, I think is what the name they did for it. And um, I was dying. I was laughing hysterically in the stand. So I told my mom the next week that I wanted to skate because my sister already was learning how to skate. And so she comes home the next week with hockey skates. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. And she's like, what do you mean? You said you want to skate. I got your skates. Like, what's your approach? She's like, freaking out. And I just turned on her. I'm like, no, I want skates like her Browning. And so I started figure skating right away. It was never like learn how to skate. I, I started in figure skating program. And I think I just really liked the performance side of it. And also, you know, I guess I learned at a very young age, I get obsessive over learning things that kind of seem impossible. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, that's why I golf now. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm never going to be that good. Yeah. <laughs> I know that. Are you, um, how far did you get with it? Um, I got to compete at two world championships, two junior world championships. Um, I was ranked top 30 in the world one year and it was, uh, it was a long ride. I think I, the, I, what I take away from skating the most is I did get to travel to like 25 different countries doing it. So I got to, at the age of 16 to 20, like experience so many people and cultures and, and differences. And I think it really opened up my mind. Top 30 in the world. Yeah. Pretty good. Not so shabby, not too shabby. You were representing Brazil, right? Yeah, I did. I represent Brazil and trash. And my mom's whole family is from there. And they were so supportive through my experiences. And I got to go there and kind of meet so many people and grow the sport there. Because now we've had you know, multiple world level skaters in Brazil that they never had before me. What, what happened? Was there an injury or? Um, no, you know, I just wanted to really get started on acting and, and pursuing this career. And, you know, I had gone to a bunch of competitions. I'd missed Olympics by three spots one year. Oh, yeah, it was so What does close. that feel like? I didn't talk to anybody for a week. Oh, really? <laughs> like pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, but after heartbroken, that. Heartbroken, I bet. Oh, super heartbroken at the time. But. I, you know, for the age I was, I think I was pretty mature in the sense that I looked at it and said, all right, I know so many people have gone to Olympics. I've, meet, I've met them. I've been a part of their lives. I know what that ceiling is for me. And is that next step worth the next four years or is growing my career as an actor worth getting started now? And I decided that it was time to step away because I wanted to do something else. You'd always wanted to act? Always, since I was seven. Like literally a year later, I was like, I'm going to be a figure skater and I'm going to be an actor. And wow. that's all I did. I never looked back and I try not to look back because uh, you never know what happens. Are there things that you took from skating that made you a better actor? I have so many. Okay. Like, uh, like I'll be honest. I think skating has helped my acting career in too many ways to even count. But the biggest ones I would say is the discipline that I gained from the sport allows me to really be committed to whatever I have to do. And just, you know, you wake up when you have to wake up, you go to bed when you have to go to bed, no matter what. And then performing is the biggest thing in the sense that as a figure skater, I, I competed in front of 5,000 people and I fell on my face multiple times in front of 5,000 people. And so that embarrassment, that understanding of that, like, I don't know what that is in film now. I'm like, yeah, so I mess up a take. Like, that's, that's not even close to falling forward and everyone going <gasps> that happened like to you five, really oh yeah five thousand people no problem oh no it happens because you prepare for skating for months and months and months and then you get four minutes to get it right and you know many times the pressure will get oh, you at okay. different points in your career yeah. and, you know it was one of my first ever competitions internationally in seoul korea and i pop this jump my so you don't rotate the whole jump and you could just hear the crowd go ah and you're like, and because they know, they all know the sport. They know you made such a huge mistake. And so when you make those mistakes, you really humble yourself and you learn to deal with that. And I think I bring that to my work all the time. I go like, listen, Kevin, you're not going to get it perfect. Deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> and you're right. Blowing a take is not as bad as... It's, not, it's really not. You spent four months preparing for that four minutes versus my take. We'll roll it back. We'll oh, do it again. Awesome. 